All right, welcome. This video is gonna get you started with Storyboard Pro. We're gonna get you set up on how to create a project, how to draw, and how to turn this thing into an animatic. So let's get going with setting up your project. When you launch the app, make sure you give it some kind of a name. I'm gonna name this one Square. You can choose a location by hitting the Browse button. You can change the title of the project, you could add a subtitle, and you could also change the layout of your aspect ratio. You could even add a new one, like a 1080 square, and you can also change the frame rate. I'm gonna hit Create Project, and one of the things I immediately do upon creating a project is to hit the save button because that finishes my directory and it will go and create all of the additional files and things needed to create your big project in Storyboard Pro. So you can kind of see that right over here. We've got all these other goodies. All right, so let's get going with drawing. This will be the second topic. So in this segment, I'd like to start drawing. And keep in mind that I have the tool properties open over here. And this drawing video is gonna assume that you already know some of the details, such as how to get these menus, you know, by hitting the plus sign and going to tool properties. At any rate, I really like the brush tool because when I use the brush tool and underneath the contour editor, if I go to the center line editor, I can go back and make this selection and I can adjust the location and the curvature of the actual um, arc. So the pencil and the pencil line editor has something like that, but it's only available in Harmony. Can't really use that in Storyboard Pro. So I never really use the pencil, but just be aware um, you can use the pencil tool. And then with the pencil tool, you can go back to the contour editor and you can adjust accordingly. Stuff you can't really do with the pencil tool is to make adjustments like this to go thick and thin. So it's just some stuff to consider. One of the things that's really powerful about Storyboard Pro is that you have access to layers. So very similar to Photoshop, you can go and create some kind of a, a background just by drawing some clouds in there, the sun, additional clouds, maybe some kind of a pathway. And what's special about layers is I can go and take that and I could duplicate this panel and it's gonna have that background already on there. So it's really convenient because maybe in the, the sequence that I'm gonna create, it'll be nice to have an establishing shot like this. Then I could go to my second panel and I can go and create some kind of a character. Let me just make this character blue. Um, this character is a little square that kind of walks in and maybe that character is gonna just start running. So as I go and scrub through the animation or through the storyboard, you can kind of see what's happening. Now, what's important is if we're gonna go back and add some additional elements, there is a really cool tool called the light table. I really, I like the light table because based on where I am and what I have selected, it's gonna go and gray out and lower the opacity visually of everything else that I see. If I go and click on a separate layer, notice that my character and my background have grayed out just a bit. And the same goes with this layer as well. You know, for instance, I could go ahead and draw in some kind of a bird that's gonna be swooping in to go after our guy. All right, let me just go ahead and duplicate this panel as well. And what I'll do is I'm going to go to the move tool. Let's go and select this character, move that one over here. I'm going to go and select these legs. So I'm going to just select and delete those legs. Go back to my brush and I'm going to go back to this bird that's right here. Move that bird over there. Get a little bit of a rotation. And that's essentially how you do some of this stuff. What you want to do is to, to use some of these tools to help you out. So you're not spending too much time constantly drawing. Um, you know, you really want to streamline your entire process. All right, 
Let's move on to the next topic. So one of my favorite tools for drawing in Storyboard Pro is this thing called the Timeline. So I pretty much use the Timeline 90% of the time. I don't really use the thumbnail uh, menu, but sometimes it's helpful, especially if you get such a large image like that. But I like to use a Timeline because a lot of times it's a good idea to go and click through and scrub through your animation so you get an idea of the timing. I also like the timeline because I can increase and then I can decrease the amount of time that it takes for certain panels to show up on screen. So maybe I have a nice long establishing shot and then these guys come in very quickly. Now, in order to make new panels, it's important to note that if you click outside here in the timeline, if you press P for panel, you're gonna get a brand new scene, which is really helpful. Um, notice that in the timeline, you've got this black bounding box around these first one, two, three, four panels. And then over here, you've got a brand new scene. Notice over here in your panel menu, it says scene two. When I click over here to the first one, it says scene one. And each one of these panels is labeled appropriately. Anyways. If I go over here and press P for panel, P for panel, P for panel, I'm gonna get a bunch of different panels, which is extremely helpful. And since I've, since I've selected and clicked it within this box, it's given me these additional panels on the inside of this scene. If you wanna get a brand new panel, I would just scrub outside with the playhead, hit P for panel, you get a brand new scene right there. So one of the things I like to do is to just kind of click, click, click out here at the beginning of a project and then what I could do is very quickly I can go and build out my scene. I can also click over here and press P a few more times repeatedly to be able to go and extend the number of scene panels that I have and then I could just start drawing. So now that I've got a couple scenes already laid out where I have an establishing shot Got an opportunity for some camera movement and then I've got a cut with some other action and some layer movement. What I want to do is to start by doing some keyframes for the camera. So one of the things I like to do is to hit the play button and I just listen and I kind of watch and I see how quickly things are going and I want to make sure that the timing is just right. If it's not, what I could do is click and drag to either extend or shrink the amount of time that an image is on the screen. And if you pull them a little bit closer to the left side, it becomes shorter. If you pull it to the right, the amount of time that it's on screen becomes a little bit longer. So it's just something to think about. Um, so having watched that, I think I'm gonna shorten this part just a bit. And then I'm gonna shorten these parts as well to maybe about I don't know, half a second. And this one will also be about a half a second as well. And I'm gonna put in some animation so it might be nice to have this one as about a second and a half to two seconds. So there we go. All right, so now that that's set up, let's go and keyframe some camera movements. So establishing shot, this looks good. Character runs in, and then as the character runs in, something swoops in right after him. So right about here, is a good time to hit a keyframe. So I'm right over here and I'm gonna start the camera movement right there. And then as this character goes and moves off screen, I'm gonna go and hit that plus sign one more time. So I've essentially got a start and a stop for the actual camera. And then what I wanna do is go to the stop for the camera, turn on the camera tool. And then what I could do is take this second keyframe and I could just kind of move it over to the right just a bit. So as I scrub through this animation, I've got my nice establishing shot and then character comes in and then camera moves to show that movement, all right? So next, let's go ahead and add in another camera movement. So we're gonna have a still shot right here and then the character is gonna come in and kind of run off to the side. So I think right around here, is a good time to just nudge the camera a little bit. So let me hit that plus sign again. That's my camera start. I'm gonna scoot right over here. 
And then here's another keyframe to show where my camera is going to stop. And since I have that tool selected, I'm going to just go and move this upwards, uh, click on this keyframe and then or click on that box so you know which camera you're going to try to affect. And then you can click and drag. And there we go. And I'm going to have this character run off screen. By the way, you can curve the camera path as well if you want to. So that's it. It'll give you a brand new keyframe to show you that target of where the camera's going. So this segment is going to cover some actual animation of specific layers. So one of the things I'd like to do is I'm going to take this part of the animation and I want to select on layer A because that's where I drew this character. And in the same way that we move the camera, I want to go over here to layer A animation. I want to hit plus sign, the plus sign. It's going to add a keyframe. By the way, you can you can increase the amount of space for these. Uh, uh, you can increase the visibility of the space for these keyframes if you go and drag that little slider. I'm going to just go and move this right over here. And I'm going to hit the plus sign again for another keyframe. So notice that I've got a keyframe for layer A where it starts and it stops. And I can just click back and forth. I like to use these arrows because I don't want to accidentally click somewhere else and get a new keyframe. Now what I want to do is I want to take this character and nudge that character a little bit over to the right. So in order to do that, I'm going to use the transform tool. So the layer transform tool will allow me to move this over here. I think that's about a good amount of space. And then as I scrub through the animation, you're going to be able to see that character move and you can tell based on the keyframes right here. All right. So now that that character has been animated, let me go and select on this layer right here, which is layer B. And I know that the I know that the bird is already in the scene. Let me decrease this so I can go and see all of my all of my uh, scene panels. Okay, so now that that's set up, what I want to do is to just figure out, okay, where do I want this thing to start to enter the scene, and do I want it to to kind of come in and follow the guy? So if I go to this, this layer right here, and if I turn on onion skin, I could see where the previous drawing is, which is right there. I could see where the future drawing is going to be. So maybe at this point, what I want to do is to figure out where can I place this? So let me go to this layer. I'm going to hit the plus sign for the layer and I'm going to scoot this back just a little bit. And then I'm going to go a little bit forward in time because remember the bird's got to be chasing this guy. So at this point, the bird is going to be right there. So I could just move that character and then I could hit the plus sign. Or actually, I don't need to hit the plus sign because by moving it, it will automatically generate one for me. And then what I could do is somewhere near the middle, I can modify that path just a little bit, give it a little bit of a downwards curve. And if I want to, I could go to each one of the keyframes and I could just kind of move them around just a bit. So maybe I want that to start there and go back and modify these other keyframes. So they're right over there. All right. So that was how you do layer animation. So now we've essentially created a full animatic in that we've got some movement, we've got some still images and it's telling some kind of a story and it does a good job of showing some, some movement and some animation. All right. So this segment is going to show you how to go and create something that's called a snapshot. Now here's the basic idea with the snapshot. Let me turn off onion skin. When you export this to a storyboard, you're going to see an image that looks like this and you might see some frames for the camera movement. But when you go to the next frame and the next and the next and the next, what happens is, is the, the app has to render what you're going to see. But what does it do when there's multiple drawings across the screen? Well, what you want to do is you want to do this thing called the snapshot. So I might want to start out right here showing nothing. And then I'm going to right click. And what I want to do is to add a snapshot. So 
there's a little indicator right here in this thumbnail and it's going to tell me what what's going to actually post to the storyboard when I export it. At some point we're going to want to indicate that there's a character that runs in. Great opportunity to add a snapshot. And then we're going to also do the same right over here. So maybe put the character right about there-ish. And that's another good time to go and add a snapshot. You're going to add a snapshot when you add some animation and you have your characters moving about the actual animation. So notice if I click over here and grab, drag the playhead to maybe this portion, I can only really see this guy. But the thing is, there's a bird that flies in. We can't even really see that bird unless what we do is we right click and we get a snapshot showing this character who's running away from camera. Might be a good idea at maybe this point. Have that character almost leaving the frame. Then add another snapshot of the bird entering the frame. So right click, add that as well. And then maybe one or two more snapshots. So we could see that the bird is actually gonna come in and we can get a, a sense of what the size of the bird is throughout the animation. Let's get one final snapshot to end out what we're gonna be able to see. All right, so that was snapshots. So this segment is gonna cover adding in audio to your storyboard and your animatic. One of the things I like to do is, since I have everything pretty much buttoned down and what I wanna do is to focus on audio, I'm gonna go and hover over this mid section right here and I'm gonna click, hold, and drag and move my timeline upwards. Because what this is gonna allow me to do is to see more of the animation controls and I can go and add in additional, um, additional audio tracks as well. So as I scrub through, I'm gonna have a little bit more control in this timeline. It's really handy. Okay, so anyways, um, I've already imported a recorded sound clip. So in order to do that, you would just in your in your sound clip, you would go right click, import sound, and you would go find it on your computer. Now what's cool is um, you can click and move this around to wherever you want. So notice at this point, we have a character that's kind of coming in. And then I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna split this audio and put the sound clip right over, over here at the beginning. So let me right click that piece of audio, and I'm going to split at the current frame. What that does is it takes this audio clip and it will separate it. So now I can move it to wherever I want. By the way, if you kind of hover over the edge of your audio, you can go and trim this down. So if there's any extraneous pieces you don't want to hear, you can get rid of it. And what I'm going to do is we'll take this and right off screen, I'm going to I'm gonna have this uh, audio clip come in right there. All right, now, um, as I scroll through the actual animation, I'm gonna look for another opportunity to put in some audio. So I'm gonna take this audio, let's move this right over here, and I'm gonna right click and I wanna move that to where it is. Now there's another way to get audio in. So we just imported some audio. Um, if you go over here off to the right, you can right click you can add a new audio track if you want to. You can also go and you can uh, go to the file menu, import, and then you can record a sound and that's gonna give you a new audio track or you can import an audio track. So let's just kind of do that right now. Let's record a sound. Okay, so I'm gonna, I think, I think I'm gonna put some dialogue right here and my character is gonna say, oh no, so let me right click right there. Let me record sound. This dialog box is gonna pop up and I'm gonna just say, oh no, right after I click this button. Oh no! All right, so now that I did, if I wanna hit that button, I can hit the play. Oh no! <laughs> and then if I'm happy with that, I'm gonna just click okay. So now that this set up right there, I'm gonna go and drag this to where it needs to be. And I think right about there is good. 
If I want to, I can get rid of some of these other pieces. Um, for instance, there's my click mark right there. So I'm just going to drag this downwards. And I'm going to also go to the end of my animation. And I'm going to make a sound effect where my character goes, ah! Okay, so let me right click and I want to go and record another sound. Ah! Hit the stop button. By the way, I want to use my current uh, audio track and I want to use my current frame because I don't want it to go to the beginning. And I'm going to click OK. So now I've got that audio there. It looks like it's a little too far out. So I'm going to just nudge that over. By the way, I can increase or decrease the volume by dragging these lines up and down. And if I wanted to, I could just kind of right click these and you know, you can change the color of these actual um, clips as well. And you can change the names and all that as well. Uh, but not really necessary uh, for what we're trying to do. So let me just set this color as green and I'm going to control S and we'll move on to the next segment. Okay, so let's review everything that we've covered. We've talked about setting up a file. We've talked about saving. We've talked about drawing additional panels. We've talked about using different tools and layers talked about camera moves, we've talked about moving layers, we've talked about snapshots, we've imported audio, we've recorded audio, and we've also talked about dragging some of these actual keyframes around. Let me undo, control Z, um, in order to get the film right. So this is essentially it. This right here, the images are storyboards, but if you go over here and you hit the play button, that's an animatic. Oh no! Caca, caca. Ah. <laughs> so a couple of the things that you could do um, that were not covered is to go over here. So for instance, um, we can hear, um, there, there's a segment right over here where there's a sound effect of a bird that's uh, screeching. So if I want to, I could put bird and then put screech. Control C to copy that. I'm going to go to this panel as well. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Paste. Then I'm going to go over here. Control V. Paste. Go over here. And I'm going to paste. And I'll do the exact same on the last one. I can go over here to our main character, which is, we'll call that character Square. So Square is going to say, oh no. And then at this point, Square is going to say, ah. OK, so that's essentially it. Um, I'm going to use these fields in order to give some information. By the way, it's a good idea to add some additional notes. So maybe I'm going to put camera pans to the right. And I'll do the exact same thing right over here. And then at this point, I'm going to say camera pans up. Camera pans, really dollies. Uh, camera pans up, control A, C to copy. Click over here and control V and then control V. I'm pretty much all set to save this. So now that I've constructed this animatic and storyboard, I'm going to go to the file menu and I want to export as a PDF, and this is gonna give me a storyboard. So make sure that you click over here and you give your storyboard some kind of a name. So I'm gonna call this uh, Square Bird, and it's gonna to save to the desktop. I'd like to do a three panel horizontal, and I'm gonna choose all of my actual uh, panels. And um, yeah, let me just make sure that this goes to the desktop. Okay, now I'm gonna click Export. By the way, when you export, you're going to see that top bar fill up. And let me close this. And off screen, um, I've got an actual storyboard as a PDF. So let me just kind of bring that in over here so we can take a quick look and examine what we've got. Okay, kind of scrub up. Notice we've got our establishing shot. We have this character that's kind of come in. I could put action notes if I want. I could put transitions, but we'll cover that in later 
uh, videos. Notice that there's a camera in, camera out, so I see some kind of movement. I have some notes. Notice that I've got some duration for the scenes. I've got the proper labeling for these actual uh, scenes and panels. And you can kind of see what's happening. Here's all of my snapshots that are set up. And I can see that I have multiple images to represent that animation that's happening. All right, let's do one more thing. We're gonna go and export the actual animatic so we've got a video. All right, so now what we're gonna do is go to the file menu, export, and this time we're gonna click movie. So when we click a movie, I'm gonna go and choose a location which will be the desktop. Let me give this a name. So I'm gonna call this square bird. And you can choose the file format. I'm going to just choose an H.264 because I'm on a Mac. You could choose a WMV and it works really well. I'm going to choose all of my scenes and I'm going to click open. So the storyboard actually populates this area with a progress bar. When you're doing a PDF, this one at the bottom is when you're going to go and export some kind of a movie. So let me just close this and then I have I have the actual film that's uh, shown up off screen. So let me bring that in and you can kind of see we've got our seven second animatic ready to go. Oh no! <laughs> hey, so I hope these videos were helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Please make sure you go check out the project section so you have an idea of what you can make and I'd like to challenge you to go and create some kind of a storyboard and animatic with animation, camera moves, audio, sound effects, and a good story. Thanks for watching. Bye.